Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to, to paint this other in watercolor. But before we start it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any one of my videos. Okay, let's start it. This is a 8 by 10 watercolor block, stone hedge, hot press paper. Um, I start with the base colors, as always, and I, I start to mark the parts that are going to be darker. My subject uh, is very small today, so I have to be careful to preserve the highlights and the parts that I want to uh, get more light. This painting took me four hours to complete which I think is very fast, because usually it takes uh, longer. So when you put the base colors, you have to look in watercolor, you have to look the color that's more predominant there. Because you cannot go dark to light, so you have to think about the, the color that is pre predominant, and think that you cannot put highlights. So. Uh, you have to put the lighter color that it's possible. And in this case, because the order is so small and I have uh, shaking hands, I'm going to do the details later on in colored pencil because I have more control with the pencil than I have with the brush. So I try to do uh, the fine hairs with pencil because it helps to, to do very uh, careful details without uh, losing anything. You have to look at the colors that you are putting there because the colors are important. Even that they're going to be in the background later on, but it's important because it's the base color that's going to show uh, your subject. And with this base color that I put, I already tried to do some uh, volume, some uh, layers that shows dimension already, uh, so it's going to be easy with the pencil later on just to, to do the uh, more details, but it's already established the colors and everything. The colors that I use is uh, some mixtures of violet and burnet umber. Watercolor is a wonderful medium to work with. The more I work with watercolors, the more I like it. The medium work with you, it's not work against you. <laughs> when I paint in colored pencil, I always thought that the colored pencil would work against me because it was so difficult to do, to get what I want, the results that I want, and it was so difficult to uh, do some mixtures and do some effects that with watercolor is so easy and just help, just happen. <laughs> Sometimes you do something and it's just so easy to blend and and, and to do this uh, little, it's not a detail, but it's um, effects that sometimes with pencil is more, is so difficult. Because pencil is easy to control, that's a good part of the colored pencil. But the bad part is that you have to do everything. If you need like one detail there or uh, uh, some colors that are going to mix with other colors and do like the graduation or something, you have to do all manually. That is no, not happening. <laughs> And watercolor is different. Watercolor, you put some colors and then the watercolors is so easy, it blends and, and do this uh, difference of colors and volumes and it just help. It's just so much easy. That's why I love watercolors. And the lightness, the effect that it, it goes, that it making the paper is so unique. I love so much. It's something very nice. So uh, here you saw that I did some marks on the wood 
and now I put some uh, yellow ochre to uh, show like it's wet in the place that the animal uh, walk and it get a very nice effect that I like too. So I keep uh, working the rocks out uh, in the background and sometimes you start to, uh, to work and you see that you lost a little bit the track that what you are doing because there's so many things that happen there and in your mind you you have one idea and sometimes uh, when you look um, it's not exactly what you think and sometimes you just uh, start to panic and you say oh my god where are I going with it that's just mess it up it's not going anywhere it's just look terrible <laughs> I don't know what to do with this now because was uh, was looking good now look terrible and I don't know what to do but you have to be patient uh, if you painting something like the, the rocks and the water that I'm, I'm trying to paint in here sometimes there is shapes and forms and and it don't look something that you expect so if you think that you are painting something uh, and you think about the I, I'm painting a rock uh, or I'm painting water or something like that you're going to get very frustrated and, and, and scared and disappointed because it's not looking the way you think in your mind that the rock should look or everything. So just keep working, don't give up your work because it's going to look better and in the end when you saw the whole thing it's going to look good because sometimes you just look this part this little part and then that doesn't make sense in your in your brain you look at you say that's weird but if you see the whole picture it's going to look good so keep working keep doing what you have to do and it's going to look better yeah believe me sometimes we get uh, stressed out we get panic because it take a little bit longer to get shape and get the way you want so don't give up uh, you know so as i say i took four hours to complete this one so it's going to take time it's not going to be ready in one hour it's not going to look good faster so just keep working as i always say i don't recommend people that start to paint to do uh, paintings with background because it's, it's too much stuff to think about it I already say that before and I keep saying because that's very true when you start painting your brain still didn't uh, capture all the things that you have to do or all the steps all the steps that you have to to make and you think about your subject is enough stressful I know because when I started I was I get stressed because I want one result and was sometimes took a very long time to get this result and it stressed me and if I have to think about the background uh, it stressed me even more because sometimes my subject look like kind of nice but the and then I put the background and the background just mess it up everything because the background didn't uh, uh, you know did match with my subject and it was uh, frustrating for me so I decided to just stop doing the background for now and start to just paint the subject until I get really good at, at that you know if I start to paint my subject my subject look really good I don't have to worry about that what I'm going to do it's going to look good or not and then you can start to, to think about the background background is the second part it's not essential and it's important you focus in something when you start it so I say to you just focus in your subject um, it, the ideal thing that you should do is do 
is trying to do one part at a time. Uh, like, say that you want to paint um, um, landscape. So first, I suggest you try to paint a tree, just one tree. Just trying to paint like several times. It's not just one time, it's not look good and then you never try again, no. Try to paint like very loosely, very, um, without the heavy uh, weight that it has to be perfect, it has to have all the, the leaves and everything, no. Just try to put your tree, the shape of your tree, the shadows, the lightest parts, just to uh, get used to the shape, get used to the colors, until you feel comfortable and do over and over again and uh, until it looks the way you start to like it. You don't have to put leaves right there right away. Just put the colors for now. Just do something very loose. Now don't think about too many details. And then when you are good if with the trees, you can change for bushes, you can change for rocks, and then you start to paint rocks, and then you start to paint in mountains, until you feel very comfortable with all these little pieces. When you paint all the pieces nicely, then you feel, oh, that's, uh, I know how to do it, and then try something big, like the whole landscape. Because the landscape is something that can be scared, uh, because there's a lot of details, a lot of different um, textures and everything that sometimes uh, make you scared. The same thing when you paint an animal. Sometimes you get scared because there's so many parts, different textures that you find an animal, like a nose, an eyes, a fur, uh, that's all different. And then you get scared because you want to do everything at the same time. So my suggestion for people that start to paint, and, and that's I say because I, I feel that it was the best thing when I was trying to do, was the best thing that I could do to make my paintings better. Because when I want to put like the fur and everything at the same time, just look a mess just don't look the way I want, and then I just throw fur everywhere. <laughs> and it's not what I, I want. Sometimes look good, but I don't even knew how it looked good because I don't, I have no idea what I did to look good, but wasn't exactly what I want. I wanna have control, I wanna understand what I'm doing. You know, I don't want to have like a good accident that make my paintings good. I want to understand why it's good, why it's not. So I, uh, what I try, I start to do is painting different parts until I understand how these parts work. So I try to draw these parts, but you don't have to draw if you don't want to, just paint. Okay, so uh, paint a nose, get a very nice photo of a dog's nose, and then paint, and then pay attention of every detail, every, every shadow, how it, it exactly is. Because if you understand the logical part of your subject, you know that they have dimensions, so some parts are, are light and always going to be light and sometimes in certain parts are dark, it's always going to be dark, and you understand the, the, the shape and the highlights, you're going to have an idea the, how you're going to make this have uh, the shape that you want. And then you start to paint like uh, part by part, uh, some, some days you paint the nose until you feel that you're comfortable with the nose and then paint uh, eyes, and start to paint some eyes, and, and see what works, what's not working, and if it's not look the way you want, uh, just go there, see how people are doing, how uh, the diff exactly uh, shape uh, every subject has, and then uh, you start to getting better. And then when you feel that your eyes and your nose look good, you can go to the uh, whole animal. 
And then uh, my suggestion is don't paint the fur already. Just do the, the general, general colors. Just forget you know, the fur. Just think about colors. Just put the right colors, the right uh, sh uh, shades, and it, it's going to be more important than put the fur. Because first you, you have to understand the shapes, the colors, but uh, the important part is you know where you're going to put your highlights, your shadows, and your darks, your lights is going to be the most important part that in your entire paint. So when you understand where to put all the stuff, all the lights, all the darks, and all the shades uh, between the darks and lights, and you're going to get the dimension that your subject have. And then you start to think about the fur. That's, let's see how to put the fur now. And then it's going to be faster and easier for you to paint, I'm sure. Because for me, it works very well. If I, when I start to see the, how the shapes work, I start to go better with the general thing. You know, so you have to be patient. You have to do part by part. And you're going to see that you're going to get better uh, every time. So as you can see, I start to put the uh, pencil, the fur with the pencil. And uh, sorry, because my pencils are <laughs> so small. <laughs> but I still have the black and I don't want to throw away because it's still, I can still work with it. So what I'm doing here is I put some uh, dark um, parts so I can uh, see exactly where is the parts uh, more dark, the shadows and everything. And I put some black already and then I put other colors. So uh, as you see, uh, because the colors under have already some shadows and some uh, volume is very easy to put the fur and it already uh, goes to the uh, give you the dimension that you you are looking for uh, as you see i don't put here uh, white because uh, i have just little parts that has really white highlights most uh, is like a wet fur so it's look like a, a violet very light so is that what i'm doing there and uh, just put the right color in the right place you don't have to just throw fur everywhere You're just going to put the fur with a purpose you know every fur you're going to draw has to be in the right place just don't go just put it everywhere uh, you have to look and pay attention very detailed in our, uh, your uh, reference photo. So I have my reference photo in my phone and I look all the time. Uh, so I know the direction, I know the colors, I know where is my highlights, where is the darks that I have to put there. And I'm going to put part by part and I'm not uh, just going to uh, think I'm doing fur and then I start to put fur everywhere. It's not the way that I want to do it. It's important to remember when you're going to draw fur that you cannot just put some short uh, traces that look all the same and then uh, just look horrible you know you have to do every fur that you draw has to have a different direction so it's going to look natural it's going to look realistic so just don't copy everything and do everything the same because it's not going to look good okay that you have to pay attention that the way you draw your fur are not going to look realistic at all right so here, because the uh, my 
video is very fast. Looks like I do very fast, but it's not. You have to do one by one carefully and you have to see the direction, you have to see how it looks, the, the, uh, if one is different of the other, it's not in the same exactly place or just going to look like a fence. <laughs> it's not like a fur. So you have to be careful about that. You can see that the backgrounds are already done. It's very easy to put fur, uh, help a lot. And the colored pencil just grab really good uh, on top of the uh, watercolor. And this paper help, help a lot because uh, the papers accept very well the, wa the watercolor, of course, because it's a watercolor paper, but it is accepted very well the uh, pencils. And uh, because it's a hot press, it's easy to put the fur without having uh, problems with the texture of the paper or of these things. So it's perfect for using with colored pencil. Uh, I like a lot. Uh, this, is, um, th this is a hot press and I have like, it's different from the uh, cold press because cold press has a lot of texture and I, I like the texture a lot. Um, but I did the hot press here because I was, my intention was doing this in colored pencil at first. But when I start to do with watercolors, I just like so much the results and I just changed my mind and did all in, in uh, watercolor. <laughs> I couldn't resist because watercolor gave the a light, uh, you know, lightness that I was uh, looking for in this, this uh, exactly subject. But for the fur, like I say, I, I have to have some help from the uh, pencils because it's easy to do because it's too small and too difficult to control the size and the uh, direction and everything from the fur. So. Uh, with pencil in this case help a lot and give a very nice effect that I, I once uh, I was uh, looking for. And my video get a little bit darker this today because it was a rainy day and I didn't realize that it's and make my, my a lot of shadows in my hand start to be in front of the camera all the time and I'm sorry for that. <laughs> And here I try to take my hands uh, off the camera so you guys couldn't see what I was doing. That's why it looked weird the way I, I grabbed the pencil. Uh, but either way, the subject was too small. It's, sometimes it's difficult to take the hands out of the camera. <laughs> As you can see, it takes a very long time just to do the fur. Even uh, with my uh, subject so small, it took a long time. Uh, colored pencil is a very slow medium. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I don't use much anymore. Because it takes too long to get what I want. It uh, takes too long to uh, I get the results that I want. And uh, it's, it's tiring too if you do some uh, large paint. Uh, you're going to get tired because, not just because take time, but yeah, it's a lot of effort in, in your hand to do all the hairs and you have to stop like 100 times to um, sharpen your pencils because it has to be very sharp to work. And all this stuff is just, for me, uh, I don't, I don't like. I would, I would use it if I don't have other option. I like the control of the colored pencil. I like the, the colors of the colored pencil, and the results is always beautiful. But because it take too long to get uh, done, uh, and after I start to using uh, mediums that you use brush, that's so easy and so um, faster to do. Uh, to get the results that you want, uh, I just uh, stop using uh, colorado pencil. 
uh, it's not that I don't like it. Uh, it's just it's just more difficult. It's just more you have to work a lot more and you have to do a more a lot more effort to get what you want. If you like colored pencil, um, the suggestion that I can do for you to keep doing and to learn faster is do small paintings, very small, because then you can do a lot of paintings and you don't get like stuck in one piece that never going to get ready and then you get so frustrating and you start to lost your interest in the piece and you just give up. So for this reason I suggest you to start very small. For me the good size to work with colored pencil was 5 by 7 maximum. Uh, so you have uh, do some close-ups of animals, but it's a small painting. You can finish in one day, or even if you don't finish in one day, you have uh, uh, time to do it. You don't have to do it in one day, but anyway, it's going to get faster done, and you don't get stressed out. You don't lost the interest in your subject. Because sometimes it just takes so long to look good or to finish that you get dismotivated to keep doing. You just say, oh, that's going to take forever and I'm not going to even start it because uh, probably I cannot finish this <laughs> this year. <laughs> so, you know, just do a small painting that you can finish faster and then you can see the results and then if you don't like it, it's a small doesn't matter, you can start again, you know, you don't lose like uh, weeks or days or uh, I don't know, hours doing, uh, it's just it's small, it's easy to do, it's not good, you just throw away, start over again, you know, uh, but keep working and I can say to you that some pieces that I hate the most was the pieces that now I like the most because I keep working on it, I just don't give up in my piece. And colored pencil, as all, like all, all other medium, has the ugly face that when you look at it, it just looks terrible and then you have to keep working. Uh, of course, colored pencil has a lot of different techniques that you can use. Some techniques is easier, some techniques uh, make more difficult uh, to achieve what you want. Uh, I like to use the... Um, mineral spirits that work very well with colored pencil and get very nice uh, results. But uh, my advice is just start small. You see this uh, other than I'm painting here is very small. You can achieve any kind of results in small paintings. You don't have to do large paintings to see nice results. And doesn't matter the size of the painting. If it is good, it's good. If it's not good, it's not good. You know, so don't worry about size. The size just make easier for you to learn, easy for you to do. And uh, when I start to do a small size, sometimes I do four by five, that's very small, just because I want to, to do fast. I wanna, more I do, you know, and more I, because I have to see my, my paintings done to get motivated to do another one. So if I do too large paintings, I just don't go anywhere. I just get stuck there and I, you know, just didn't work for me. I have to see my paintings done. Even if it's not good, I do again. But the important part is I, I sometimes can change techniques. Sometimes I can use Bristol paper and don't use mineral spirit at all. Just uh, blend the pencils, you know. So the important part is just uh, do it small so it's faster and easier for you to adapt and to change techniques and to do uh, different things. So as you can see here, I'm trying to do the uh, background rocks with pencil. And I start to uh, look kind of nice, but when I start to doing, um, I just feel that the pencil wasn't give to me the results that I was expecting. 
because I want the painting look very light, very, you know, nice and fluid like water. <laughs> and the pencil was getting too dark, too heavy for the results that I really, really looking for. So I start here, I mix some colors, and, and then I just see that's uh, not working. That's not, that's not at all what I want. Uh, so I start to, I just change the technique. I just give up on a color pencil here, and I start to put some uh, work with watercolor again. And uh, it was a very good uh, decision for me because the results get exactly the way I was uh, expecting later on. So uh, sometimes we just have something in our mind that, that's not working and then you just adapt it, you just uh, have to just change it, just uh, think different and you start doing different. And because I just start with like uh, in this small space, I couldn't change my mind and it didn't really interfere in the in the whole painting. The long version of this video is in my Patreon and I'm going to put the link below. So if you guys are interested, just go there and check it out. I also going to put it in the description box below all the materials that I used today. Uh, so you guys know exactly what I'm doing. If you guys consider buy one of these uh, materials, please click in the link below so you help to support my channel with no extra cost to you. In my website, I have the review of the Stonehenge paper, paper if you guys are interested, and I put the link below too. If you guys have some question or if you want me to see me painting with some other mediums, just let me know in the comments 
and if I can do something better in the videos that help you guys and so let me know too because I, I want to improve it but I don't know exactly what to do so if you guys say what is better for you I can try to do the best that's all for today I hope you guys have enjoyed it if you didn't subscribe yet please hit the subscribe button so you can help to support my channel and allow me to do more videos like this thank you for watching and see you in the next video Music